Learn how to configure cores in a Spring Boot REST application to make it accessible from a front-end application such as React or Angular. But before I start, you might want to check my website at setsuyatech.com. If you want to help the channel, check my Patreon. And if you have any questions about programming, check out my Discord community at setsuyatech. With that said, let's begin. What is cores? And why do we need cores? Cores, or cross-origin resource sharing, is a browser security feature that restricts accessing the resource of server B from an HTTP request initiated by a script coming from server A. Normally, we have our API server running on the back end, such as api.setsuyatech.com. This is where actual data fetching and manipulation happens. On the other side, we have our front-end client, which is normally powered by either React, Angular, or Vue, for example, satsuya.com. And this client fetches data from our API server. How does course work? Let's take a look at this sequence diagram. This is a sequence diagram when calling get books and point. First, the browser performs course pre-flight request via the HTTP options method. If course headers from the server match that of client, it will proceed. It will respond with 200 OK plus the headers. And uh, these are some of the headers that it will compare. The access control allow methods. The access control allow origin. This is where the problem normally happens when it's configured to accept localhost 3000 and your, for example, your front-end client is running on port 4000. When this is okay, that is the time when our React front-end can issue the HTTP GET books request and the Spring REST service can respond with 200 OK plus the headers plus the data. There are different ways of configuring course. First is via the cross-origin annotation. Cross-origin is actually a spring annotation that we can use on any Java type or method to configure cores. This is good if you just have one or two endpoints. I normally use it to override global configuration when testing a particular endpoint. Next is globally via Spring Web MVC Configurer. In practice, we would normally use this approach as often we have a defined set of clients who will access the resource server in the same way, and having the configuration in the same place makes maintenance easier. Here we can see that we have implemented the web MVC configurer, and we are mapping all our endpoints inside this project. As series means it will accept any allowable value for that build. For example, Allowed methods will accept get, post, put, delete options via the org.springframework.http.http method. Allowed origins tell Spring to only accept AJAX requests from this URL patterns. Max age, it indicates how long to cache the result of a course pre-flight request. Moving on to deployment and testing. To see how course work, clone the following Git repositories. These URLs will be available in the description box of this video. But before you can run this project, you must first install the following components on your local machine, OpenJDK, Node, and Yarn. To install Yarn, open your terminal and execute npm install global yarn. After you're done installing these components, you can import the two projects in IntelliJ, or you can run it in your terminal. Here, I have two terminals open. One is for the Spring Course project, and the other one is for the Spring Course Next.js project. And to run the Spring Course, type mbn Spring Boot Run. And for the Spring Course Next.js, type yarn dev. So if it's your first time, you must install first the dependencies and yarn dev. 
And now that both our projects are running, we are ready to do our testing. This is the next JS React project, and this is the Spring Boot project. So let's try accessing our React project. Take note that by default, React is running on port 3000. So here I have configured several use cases. So first is the get books. If we examine our Spring Boot project, we have three controllers. One is book controller, one is annotated class controller, and the other one is the annotated method book controller. For the first one, get books, it will call the book controller. Let's try that. Get books. Here we see that we have an error failed to patch and if we actually take a look at the console log we will see that we have a course error course policy no access control allow origin header so what happens here get books if we look at the next js project the get books which is this one the first one simply call the get books api which is this one, get books, API URL is where the Spring application is running and it's calling the books endpoint, which is this one. Did you figure it out with this configuration? If not, then here's the problem. In the configuration, our allowed origins is 192.168.1.9. But in the URL, I've written localhost port 3000. And if we look at the log, access to fetch at this URL from origin has been blocked. Access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. So to correct that, we must update this to our local IP or our network IP where React is running. My local IP is 192.168. That one, that nine. If you don't know how to get this, if you are running on Windows, just type ipconfig, pipe, find str192. So here, you can see that my IPv4 address is 192.168.1.9. Or if you don't know what is your base IP, then just type IP, just type IP, and you will see here. The IPv4 address. So normally we are using IPv4. Now I have corrected the URL 192.168.1.9 port 3000. So it now match now match the allowed origins in my course configuration in my Spring course project. That's why I was able to access the URL and uh, get the books. So here the request is successful because the pre plight respond with 200 OK. Okay, let's take a look at the class and method. Class simply overrides the course configuration with cross origin. So it takes priority. Now origin patterns is the same. So it should work. And that is the same with the uh, annotated method book controller so this is the method and i have annotated it with cross origin let's try that class so i get a respond a response and the method i get a response as well now for the annotated method book controller i have a method without cross origin annotation and if i try to call that it succeed again why because it used the global configuration and let's try the last one get books by api get books by api so it succeed it's just hard to demo because of the screen size right let's try that get books okay let's clear this and get books by api and here we can see the respond and last let's try the get books by api so first let's clear the console log and the uh, Hit the get books by API. And again, let's take a look at the log. Here we can see that we have successfully called the get books by API. Later on, I will explain the difference between the first four and the get books by API. Now let's try changing the allowed origins in the global configuration and uh, change this to 3001. 
and uh, control ship F9 so that spring will rebuild and will redeploy my change and now we know that the, the get the books endpoint should throw a course head error why because in the web mvc config we have set the allowed origins to only accept requests from port 3001 and our application is running on port 3000 now let's try that refresh and hit the get books here we have the course error as we have expected and let's take a look at the annotated class book controller so this one should not fail because cross origin annotation should take precedence over the global configuration which is wrong so let's try this uh, get books via class annotation so as we can see here it is successful we have successfully called the annotated class books endpoint and next let's try the get books by a method annotation which is this one so again this should succeed because we have overridden the course configuration in the method level so let's try that and here we can see the response next is the uh, annotated method books restricted so this one doesn't have cross origin annotation so it will take the global configuration which is wrong so we should have a course error when calling this endpoint let's try that uh, first let's clear the logs and let's call this get books via annotation but first let's resize the screen call this and check the logs so as we can see here we have the course error as we have expected why again because our method is using the global configuration of course where we set the allowed origins to only accept requests from port 3001 and our client is running on port 3000 that's why there is a mismatch now let's take a look at our get books via api so what what's the difference if we will check all our get books get books by a class by a method is using the api url but the get books via api is calling the api books this api books is a next uh, js a specific feature so it's calling this pages api books and inside this api it's calling the spring endpoint books this is our ib this is our application running on port 8080. Now let's try that. Again, it should fail like the get books, right? So if we call the get books, it, it's currently failing. And uh, that's the same. So this is the books. And inside this books API, inside Next.js, it's also, it will also call the same endpoint. Now let's try that. First clean. F12 and call the get books by API. Now let's check. As we can see here, it has or the request has succeeded. Why is that? We will get a clue if we check the log that we have here in uh, Spring Boot. Here we can see that this uh, request has succeeded. And if we will check the request, we will see that the user agent is node fetch. And if we look at the request that failed this one failed this one was rejected we will see that it has an origin and referrer origin is the url where the script runs and here so the user agent here is uh, the mozilla the browser the user agent here is node page and there is no origin why is that it's because uh, next.js api runs on the back end side meaning this javascript pages api books run on the node server and not on the browser and remember the definition of the the definition of course is that it's a browser security feature and again when we call the endpoint via the node api so the request comes from the the, the back end that's why the course check is not triggered so there you have it course i hope you learned something from it and that concludes this video 
With that said, if you want to see more videos like this or anything related to programming, hit that subscribe button and the bell button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.